In this video, you are going to learn the 10 most important things that you need to do before launching your Framer website. Each of these things are really important, so make sure that you watch the video until the end. My name is Nandi, this is Framer University, and let's get started. Okay, so the first thing is that you need to make sure that all necessary breakpoints are added to your website. This is usually a desktop breakpoint, the tablet breakpoint and the phone breakpoint, but if you need more, you can add more too. So maybe you need a bigger breakpoint, maybe you need a smaller breakpoint, feel free to add those. And you need to make sure that all of these breakpoints are nicely optimized. So as you preview your image and resize the viewport these need to be responsive as you can see right here so as i resize the viewport the website nicely adapts to the changes so that's the first and most important thing the second thing is image alt text so for example as you can see we have an image on this website this is a tesla model 3 and we have this frame it's called model 3 and this has the fill which is an image. And if I click here, I see this window right here. It has an alt text property. And as you can see, it nicely set to Tesla Model 3. So basically you need to describe the image in the alt text. So for example, if you have an image of a person, then you might say something like a photo of David or something like that. So the alt text needs to be really descriptive because it is also really important for SEO purposes because basically this way the search engines can tell what the images are about. So yeah, this is the second most important thing. The third thing you need to make sure is that all frames are set to the appropriate tag. So for example, we have a frame right here called section. Of course, this frame is a section on the website. And as you can see on the right panel under the accessibility section, we have a tag property. And here you need to make sure that the section is selected because this is a section frame and as you can see you have multiple choices so for example if you have an article you need to set it to article the aside is used for content on the page that is not directly related to the main content on the page the button is of course used for buttons, the div is basically the default for each frame. The fig caption and figure kind of goes together, so they are used in a way that, for example, you wrap an image in a figure and then inside of that you can use fig caption as the title of the image or basically any media. The footer is of course used for the footer section on the bottom of your website. The header is used for the header on the top of your website. The main is used for the main container on your website. And the nav is basically the navigation bar. And we already talked about the section. Okay, so the fourth thing is that you need to make sure that all buttons are optimized. What do I mean by that? So for example, as you can see here, we have two buttons but each of these are components. So this is the same component. They are just two different variants. This is the primary variant and this is the secondary variant. And if you preview the website right now, you can see that if I hover this button, the cursor doesn't really change. And also I can select this text, which is not really good for interactive elements. So we're gonna fix all of these things by going into the component, selecting the primary variant. And first of all, I'm gonna change the cursor on hover. So I'm gonna go to styles, press this plus button, cursor, and then I'm gonna change it to pointer. The next thing we're gonna do is set the tag to button. This is basically the same thing that I talked about previously. And the last thing is to make sure that the label is not selectable. We need to select it, then go to the styles and select user select and we need to set it to none. And if we give this website a preview again, you can see that now these buttons are nicely optimized and the text is not selectable and the cursor also changes when we hover the button. The fifth thing is that icon only interactive elements should define an area label. So for example, on this website, you can see that we have this logo here 
which is actually clickable so we can click it and it will take us to a different website but if we take a look and select this frame you can see that here under the accessibility section we can define the area label so i'm gonna say framer university logo this is really important for accessibility reasons because if someone who is for example blind visits your website and uses a screen reader, the screen reader can announce the area label of the element to the user. And this is really important especially for icon only buttons because those doesn't have any text that could be announced to the user. Because for example right here it is not necessary to define the area label because we have the label here on the button but as I said if you have a button that is icon only please make sure that the area label is set under the accessibility section. The sixth thing can be actually found in the site settings and under the general tab it is the site title. It is really important to set a nice and descriptive title for your website. This will be shown in the browsers or in the search results and it is also really important for SEO purposes. The seventh thing is also something like this. It is the site description. This is shown for example when a user searches for your website and it appears in the search results it will basically be under the site title and it also needs to be really descriptive and you can also use different keywords so for example on this website as you can see i used framer university as a keyword so if someone will search for framer university hopefully my website will pop up the eighth thing is the site language this is really obvious you need to set the appropriate language for your website so for example if you are writing the website in English then you should set it to English this is needed because it will be much easier for the search engine to detect the content on your website if it knows the language the ninth thing is right here if we scroll down the favicon this can be for example a logo of your brand or something like that this will be shown in the browsers next to the tab and you also need to keep in mind that this is a really small image. It is in fact 32 by 32 pixels. So you need to make sure that the design that you are using is visible in smaller sizes too. And the last thing that you need to set is the site social image, which is the image that you see when you share your website on Facebook or Twitter or any other social media websites. Oh, and by the way these settings can be customized for each page on your website so for example if you have multiple pages you can go here under the page settings and set the site title the page description and the social image for each of these pages and basically if you did all these things you can safely press the publish button and then click update here and your website is live on the internet so these were the 10 most important things that you need to do before launching your Framer website. Make sure to check out the description to find Framer University and other useful resources that will help you learn everything about Framer. So that's it for today's tutorial. Make sure to like it and subscribe for more. And I'm gonna see you in the next one.